There's a phrase I'm hearing more and more often from Masterpiece Transformers collectors. It's not a new phrase by any means, but that phrase is, I will wait for the fans toys. I'm also hearing people say they want only fans toys in their collection. Today I want to talk about a world with only fans toys. And I can understand people's mentality when they think this way. Fans Toys is probably the leading company in Masterpiece Transformers these days. And they make such great looking figures. They match the aesthetic. They have the paint. They have everything that you want as a Masterpiece collector. Let's talk about the pluses and minuses of being Fans Toys only. So first off, I want to talk about in a world of only fans toys and the people that strive for only fans toys, what are you doing about Megatron and Optimus Prime? Now, this is an obvious one. Takara is making these figures. They've done a great job with them. And I do believe that these fans toys elitists are using at least a Takara, if not maybe something else, for a stand-in for a Megatron and Optimus Prime. Two of the most iconic characters in Transformers. They have to have a representation. But if you're fans toys only true and blue you don't have a fans toys version of this now i do believe fans toys will eventually make one down the road again looking at the car bots there's no autobot car bots of these molds planned by fans toys just yet and so with that you would either have takaras on your shelf or you would have nothing at all you would have a hole that needs to be filled waiting for fans toys to even announce this and of course, Bumblebee, Cliff Jumper. There is no Bumblebee, an official Bumblebee and Cliff Jumper announced. Now, we did see a shadow of a what we think is a Cliff Jumper in one of the pictures back at one of the cons, but nothing is officially announced as of yet by Fans Toys. So, why is this even a topic of discussion? Why do we need to bring this up? The point is that when Takara puts a figure out, all of third party stops making that character for whatever reason, with the exception of Optimus Prime. Now, I've noticed with Hot Rod, Fans Toys is one of the few companies that's actually taken on Takara after Takara has put out their version of that figure. Now, there's a lot of speculation as to why third-party companies back off once Takara puts these figures out. Is it because of respect? Is it because of fear of litigation? Or is it because they look at Takara and say, Takara does such good work, they can't beat it. I guarantee you, Fans Toys looks at pretty much everything Takara puts out and says, yes, I think I can beat that. Subsequently, I think Takara does the exact same thing. Every time Fans Toys releases something, Takara looks at it and says, you know what, we could one-up them if we wanted to, but we don't feel like doing it with that character. That's my belief on what Takara does and how they view it, because obviously Takara and Fans Toys and all the other third-party companies have some sort of a relationship in there. Just like with these two guys. So when Inferno dropped and when Ironhide dropped, all third-party just stopped dead in their tracks. There were no other third-party releases after this unless it was already a pre-order kind of thing and it was already getting produced. But for what I have seen, I've not seen another version of these come out once Takara put theirs out. And for that, I think... One of the only companies that would want to take them on is Fans Toys. And why is it taking them so long? Because I think that both of these could use an updated version, especially from Fans Toys. But this brings about a whole other topic, and the topic of KOs and knockoffs. Have you ever wondered why every single product Takara makes seems to get knocked off? And then have you ever wondered why Fans Toys has yet to have one of their products knocked off? Now, Fans Toys is going to have a clear version of their Phoenix, or their FT-10, and that's going to get produced by some other company, and that is from their own doing. They are allowing it. But Fans Toys keeps all of their files, all of their molds, everything under tight control, and the manufacturing process, if you, you look at the quality control on it, they do watch their manufacturing process very closely, unlike some of the other companies. And i got to say... There's a reason why Takara stuff gets knocked off. The two main theories behind Takara knockoffs is they're simply just selling their design to knockoff KO companies so they make a little bit of extra money back on the side with doing absolutely no work after that. And of course, they don't have to claim any responsibility 
what goes on after that. And the more expensive part is, of course, the designing of the figure, and so they just get manufactured relatively cheaply and sold. That's one. The other one is, of course, selling off extra stock that has some sort of a problem or some sort of a defect, and they sell it to one of these other companies, and it gets pawned off as fourth party or KO. Fans Toys does none of that that I have seen. So in a world of only fans toys, there's not a cheaper option. Now, the cool thing about Takara is, yes, they're the most expensive figures around, even more expensive than fans toys, but if you wait long enough, they become the cheapest figures around because of the KOs. If you can live with the subpar quality on some of these KOs, and that's a thing. So subsequently, a world with only fans toys. If every other company kinds of quits the G1 game, including Takara, you have a world with no knockoffs. You have a world with no cheaper alternatives, and that becomes a problem in a way. Fans Toys is still controlling their price a bit. Now, a lot of people feel like Fans Toys' price is through the roof. So we have seen some price hikes from all of the companies. Fans Toys led the way, and a lot of people blame Fans Toys. It's not really 100% Fans Toys' fault that prices are going up, we have global shipping issues, but I think they might have jacked their price up a little more than they should have. On the other hand, I feel like we've also gotten really good value out of these figures over the past few years, and a lot of the figures they put out these days are still a phenomenal value. But if Fans Toys had absolutely no competition, how much more expensive would their figures be? How much more would they charge? That's an unknown factor that's going to be left to your imagination and your wallet. So next up, if Fans Toys was the only one making G1 Transformers, well, we would have far less character selection out there right now. MMC, now this is actually an example of not true and blue G1, but G1 enough for me. I'm happy enough with the MMC Skylinks. I feel the same way about their cassettes. I like the styling of their cassettes. Even though they're not 100% G1, they're really, really close. Also, you got Bad Cube Grump. Well, that's the really the only option out there right now for a Gears, why hasn't Fans Toys announced that they're going to make one? Why aren't they making one? That's an interesting idea right there, but how long would it take till they finally get one out? Also with X-Transbots, X-Transbots has a lot of figures out there that a lot of people feel are maybe subpar or not as good as what Fans Toys would do, but at the end of the day, there's still options and in the future, if Fans Toys is the only one making Masterpiece Transformers, we're going to eliminate options. Options such as the KFC and the KFC Blaster. Now, we haven't had an official Blaster announcement, but everybody in the community feels like Fans Toys has one in the works, and a lot of people think Takara has one in the works. In fact, I heard a rumor, an inside rumor, that they're working on one, but that's been three years now since I've heard Takara's working on one. But will Fans Toys give us one? And will they finally get their sound wave out and then give us a Blaster to match it? Who knows? I still have the KFC. I like the KFC. I like the paint on the KFC. It's one of the best painted figures around. And I also appreciate the tapes. And I know they're not perfect. Next, a world with only fans toys would actually limit your options for combiners. Now, looking, they're working on two combiners at once, finishing them up. They've announced no other combiners past this. And I'm sure they're going to give us more in the future. But when you look at these, they both look great but it's taking about two years to get them finished up. It's uh, going to be the end of 2021 before the last figure is out. From what I have heard, that's how long it's going to take. So when they do subsequently finish up the other combiner sets, their first two sets, what else are they going to move on to? I start to fear they're going to move on to figures that we already have a decent representation and not the ones we really need, like Defensor and Computron will probably get another Bruticus, which I don't truly think we need as much. Lastly, I really want to touch on another topic here. If they were to make every G1 figure a fan's toys, how long would it take? And I want to say Hasbro has been trying to do that for the better part of a decade. Around 2013, they started with their Combiner Wars. Their Combiner Wars started going close to G1, almost Super G1, and then up to Siege and now Earthrise, which is getting really close. 
And with that, that's the better part of a decade. Now Hasbro is a much bigger company with much more resources, puts out far more figures every year than Fansoys, even though Fansoy is an extremely prolific company that does put out more than any other masterpiece. Hasbro puts out that many and it's been a decade and they're still not at 100%. Then you start to wonder, will Fans Toys do every figure or only popular figures? Will they go into super obscure? How obscure will they go? How minute and minor of a character would they get into? Now these two that I'm showing, this I, I feel both of these would eventually get made by Fans Toys. I feel like they could announce both these figures tomorrow and pre-orders would sell out for them and I bet everybody that gets them would be stoked they'd be super excited and happy when they receive these figures because they were made by fans toys they look really good they'd have the weight behind them the die cast the paint the aesthetic both modes would look great fans toys could pretty much write their ticket and do what they want at this point and truth be told no other company that makes masterpiece Transformers is in that position that they can make any figure they want and they sell out. That's a fans toys only thing that's going on right now and I have to admit some of the companies seem to be getting discouraged. Fans toys is delivering on the promise and the expectation but some of their figures they're not perfect. I mean this not everything they make is 100% perfect. But they all look good. They all meet the expectation to a point. Some have limited articulation and some issues like that. I feel like a couple of them might be a little too short. Some feel Fans Toys makes their figures too tall. But at the end of the day, I think this company does excellent work. They do a great job. I love their products. I'm excited for them. But I still like to have a mix and blend of other companies on my shelf. I like to have the best of the best from what other companies and I like to see other companies take on the same characters. I kind of like that in the end to have options. If all these other companies quit and they give up and throw in the towel, Fans Toys is all that's left, it would still be exciting. I would still enjoy every Fans Toys release. But I'd like to know what you think. What do you think about a world with only Fans Toys? Would that get you excited? Would you be disappointed in that? What other problems would arise because of this? Again, Fans Toys would have a lot of power, and with great power comes great responsibility. Like, subscribe, Pateram Hanger out.